this is not going to be uh, really fancy and slick um, because I represent libraries from the other side of the tracks. Uh, people who can't afford vendors uh, to do things for them. So, excuse me, this really dry weather has uh, dehydrated me. Uh, so a lot of libraries, not necessarily your libraries, have uh, a lot of their cataloging data in spreadsheets. Um, I've talked to one library in Eswatini, another one in Berlin. And uh, when I was talking to Lauren, she says, oh yeah, I do this all the time. Uh, so I've said, okay, we need to do a presentation together. So yes. Uh, Names and fly, Fred King and Lauren Denny. Uh, my library is really small. We have very lax circulation. You know, oh, just, just bring it back sometime. And um, I have, that's about all I have to say about my library. My library is 23 libraries globally. Some have moderate circulation use. Others are still on paper and cards. Um, and the sizes range from, uh, I think 30,000 volumes is our largest library and maybe 1,500 is our smallest library. Um, obviously a um, presentation by a librarian needs to do, include a picture of a cat. Uh, I haven't Okay, we saw kittens yesterday, but what is wrong with you people? I haven't seen a single animal. Um, you may have figured out this is not a cat. Uh, it's actually our smaller dog, Schooner. Um, she's hiding because there's a thunderstorm. She is 50 pounds of love, exuberance, and toenails. And occasionally, if you look at my arm, there's a few scars. Uh, occasionally she demonstrates her commitment to open sores. Uh, uh, our, we do have a cat, he's feeling a bit poorly, so I didn't want to upset him. Okay, I've got to give you a little, my personal history of how I ended up with all these books that I, going to talk to you about. I was given my book, first book when I was six weeks old. I couldn't read it, but uh, I, I don't think I could even look at the pictures. Um, father collected cartoon books. I discovered used bookstores. One of my favorites and is, is uh, the browsery in Greensboro, North Carolina, where I went to college. Uh, to do but anyway, I sorted all of mine to a CSV. And this is how I put them into COA. And now, among other things, besides having something to talk about, when I went to the tattered book, our dusty bookshelf last night, I could look this up and I found, no, I don't have it. I can do it. So can you. This is not going to be elegant. Um, this is the way I figured out how to do it. There may be a better way. You might be able to use a hammer. I happen to have a wrench handy. And when I had to pound in some nails, but you probably have a better way. This is the way I can do it. Um, you know, regular expressions would do all sorts of wonderful things. I don't know regular expressions. All right. So let me start with my spreadsheet. Um, I put all of these in by hand. So there are a few typos. Uh, anyone who is sufficiently uh, CDO, like OCD, but in, in alphabetic order, you know, the way it should be, uh, probably if you can actually read the screen, Notice there's one little brown and company that doesn't have a comma. So can remove duplicates in a single column. 
I pasted this into a new spreadsheet, just make it easier. Remove duplicates. And I put them in alphabetical order. And now I can go through and choose the ones that are in too many different formats. Andrews McNeil Publishing, LLC. Well, there should be a comma after that. A.S. Barnes, Ampersand or And Company. Actually, Andrews and McNeil, Andrews and McNeil Incorporated, Andrews McNeil. You can see it's not really typos, it's just the publisher has gone through a whole lot of different names. And you can do this with any column. I didn't have a lot of duplicate uh, or typos in the authors. Uh, when I was doing my spreadsheet, I had some abbreviations. I wanted the format, you know, dust jacket or hardcover or torn dust jacket. Um, I have the room now, so I can put them in mark records in their full form. And again, you find and replace in a column. I've already run dust jacket. Now I'm doing P and turning that into pa paperback. I have 662 paperbacks. That's just the trade paperback. Uh, I didn't put uh, any designation after pages or centimeters. Uh, what I did was uh, just copy the entire column into Word. I uh, looked for a paragraph return, that's the uh, caret P, and replaced it with CM caret P. And I actually do this a lot when I add to, need to add designations to uh, columns. Paste it back in, 29 CM as it should be. And if a cataloger points out that it should be, should not be CM period, like Heather did. Um, thank you, Heather, I think. Uh, and uh, Heather, if you're listening, I hope you brought, brought your pearls to clutch. Uh, but, <laughs> Actually, she was a, sort of a co-author and proofreader on this. But you know, not everything is going to have something like page numbers. A lot of my books are unpaginated. So I went through and gave every line P, P space P period, and then looked for paragraph return space P period. Replace it paragraph return. Now the only ones with uh, page numbers have page numbers. Word or Excel will warn you sometimes that the length doesn't uh, match what you're pasting in. Uh, should go to the bottom column. Go to the bottom and check just to make sure. Uh, you really. Uh, Built in suspenders, I am. Uh, create new column and paste it in, and then can delete the old one. Lauren, would you care to uh, expound upon what you say here? So I do the same thing as Fred, but in Excel. So I will add a column beside it and start the pattern of um, the number with the centimeters and adding that in there and then after a while excel will figure out what i'm doing and add it through the rest of the column um which is wonderful and great but you need to copy and paste it as text because mark edit does not like that formula that's creating what you see in excel and a lot of times I do that at the very end because I forget which ones I've done. The I've let Excel figure out what I'm doing and create what I want it to do. Um, and then at the end, it's just easier to just copy all of it, paste it as text in a new spreadsheet, and then save that um, as my file. 
Okay, when I was put, putting in the ISBNs and the um, LCCNs in my original catalog, I uh, put in dashes because um, there were dashes in, in the book. Uh, I subsequently found out that uh, no proper mark records don't have dashes. So I took them all out again, um, looked for a dash, replaced with nothing. And, and oh, wait a minute, what happened to the leading zeros? Uh, you need to have your column set to text. Um, except of course you can't set up the column before you enter all your data. So yeah, it may be a problem. Uh, George has a similar story with leading zeros in the uh, barcodes. Um, might be able to find and replace the text format. I never did get that right. But now comes the exciting part. Uh, this is our larger dog, Farley. And yes, he is off the ground. Uh, actually, this is the part where I start using converting to mark records so it's really hev heavy into cataloging jargon and I realize that we are the last two people between you and lunch uh, so if you're getting hungry and you don't really want to learn mark um, it's okay you can leave now I'd like a few of you to stay okay when I put in uh, my original tags uh, this is what I uh, decided to save, and I really didn't want to get rid of anything. So, whoops, sorry. Um, so this is what I did, the mark equivalents. This worked for me. What's going on here? Um, I think I'll move my, okay, who's advancing it? Anyone? <laughs> Uh, worked for me. If you have more than one copy in the book, this may not work. I wanted to put the item specific information all in 952. Uh, and if you don't have the foggiest idea of what I'm talking about, uh, go to this address. This will explain mark tags in more detail than you could possibly ever want. Now we have to review. Okay, I told you I wanted to put uh, some things in 952 format or new used remainder, a um, couple of others. Of course, you can't put things in more than one thing in the 952. Hold that thought. But review, do these work? Will they work for future books? Can you repeat subfields? On one catalog, I have everything, all the authors in 100. I have a gasp from all the catalogers. You really can't. Yeah, uh, that's why I use 700 in this. And also, are you using the right field, subfield? This will not, uh, your first go through is probably not going to be right. That's okay. First of all, if you're the only person or library using this catalog, it doesn't matter as much as you think you do. Also, you can go back and change them later. I remember I said you couldn't put more than one thing in 952Z, which is a uh, public note. Well, Actually, you can have multiple fields in any field. Hella is infinitely configurable. And here's how to do it quickly. From the co-administration, you go to Mark Bibliographic Framework, look for the 952 field, choose edit subfields. This is the uh, field Z. Click on repeatable. Now you can repeat it. And you can do that with anything. So this is the spreadsheet I ended up with. Uh, I'm sure you can all read this. Um, but for you wimps, uh, I 
enlarge the first three rows. Uh, I wanted to make sure that the columns were identified. Uh, the first one was labeled LCC and ISBN. Uh, by the way, you notice um, I use O10Z for LCCN because I actually have converted them all to the current format. I'm not going to cover that in this talk. Um, yeah, mark field, and then the column number. Now we can go to mark edit. Yeah, I'm sure you've all heard of mark edit. I'm going to tell you about it anyway. Anyone who uses MARC records in any way needs to know MARC edit. Runs on pretty much anything. Cost is well worth within library budgets. And Terry Reese is the gentleman behind it. And in uh, 2019, he got a, a well-deserved ALA award. At, what does it do? kind of like a Swiss army knife. Well, you know about three things. Whoops, wait a minute. There's a few more. It does an awful lot of things, which I'm not gonna talk about today. And this, yes, this is my kitchen. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start mark edit, up to export tab to limited text. That is the Spreadsheet I'm, I have, cartoon ready to convert. Put in the file and then the output file. And if you're using multiple spread, uh, sheets, make sure you have the sheet number. I, I usually do uh, just one spreadsheet with one sheet with all my data. Uh, Lauren suggested I added that. Sometimes I get over adventure, adventurous and have all these multiple sheets of everything that I've edited in the same Excel file instead of a separate one. And I have to remember, oh, I don't want that one. I meant this one to convert. And you find out if you're on the right sheet or not when you get to the screen because your headings don't match what you wanted to match. Yes, you realize that um, this, we, I, we designed this so that it would work the first time. This, this doesn't happen. Anyway, you, now you see why we put author and the tag in the first two rows. So field zero. Want to map to 700A, and I want to put in an indicator. Actually, Lauren wanted to put in the indicators because I haven't done much with indicators. I want mark or I want RDA standards um, for sorting and other things in Koha. So that's why the indicators matter. I want it to work. Easily. Okay, and you can see 700A is at the bottom after I added the argument. Um, 700E is author editor, so I added that. Now, you don't join them, everything is gonna be on one row, uh, have, have its own row in the cataloging record, which gets kind of annoying and messy. So if you right click, you can join items. And Lauren came up with the idea, you know, you really can move your Excel sheet to uh, uh, have the, uh, the items you want to join next to each other in columns. Wish I thought of that. And afterwards you can see there's an, one asterisk in front of that. And eventually I have two, three, four asterisks. Anyway, I've put in all my data I want. I recommend making a template. 
because that way, next time you do this, you can just load the template. And you click OK, and everything has been processed. And here's what they look like. I mean, they're fairly basic mark records. Um, author, title, publisher, item type. Um, you can see uh, the 952Z. There are a couple of them. And of course, you're going to get everything right the first time, right? <laughs> Excuse me. No, you're not. Well, if you do, I'm going to be whomper jawed. So review, review, review. Go back, do it again. Do you have the right indicators? Do you have the columns right? Have the few fields you need and subfields needed join? Do you have all of the ones you want to join? Do you match all the columns, or did you leave one out? Um, I usually do at least two of these. Go back again. Keep trying to get it right. This is why you saved a template. So Lauren, would you like to uh, suggest other reasons to save a template? So that's the main reason I save a template. I also, um, I have for some of my libraries, um, the librarians do not use Koha. They use a, a Google form which converts to an spreadsheet and then I add their books that way. I've also had librarians or volunteers, not librarians. I've had volunteers to help me catalog a um, group of reprint articles that were in filing cabinets. And I did not wanna teach them how to catalog and use Koha. It was just simpler to have them import that data into an Excel spreadsheet and so I saved the template so that every time I would get a spreadsheet from them, which could be a month later or two months later or three months later, um, all I had to do was load the template back in. I didn't have to go through the whole mapping the fields process. I could just load it, convert it, and then start adding or editing um, my records as I needed to, which saved a whole lot of time. Um, the problem I've run into is remembering which template goes with which project. So in naming your template, make sure that it's something that's unique enough to the project so that you can remember, oh yeah, that belongs with what I'm doing here instead of something else. Otherwise, you're going to have to either start all over again or um load every template individually to remember which one you um have my memory doesn't work very well sometimes <laughs> uh, also i tend to save each iteration of the mark file um the cartoon finished a cartoon finished b etc um, and i save each step in excel Anytime if I'm create, editing a field, I save it at each step. I've learned that saves time and in Mark as well, because you make a mistake that you can't undo and you don't want to start all over again. It's easier to start, start from the last finished step. First, you are going to end up with an awful lot of files but they're not huge and this space is really cheap. I mean, I've got an eight terabyte disk farm and a 12 terabyte server in my basement, not to mention what I have online. So yeah, I'm sure most of you for whom this would re be relevant, you know, have to seen compile and upload. Uh, if you have something you've uploaded and then you download it from, let's say, export data, um, more, um, 
Mark edit will also convert from MRC to MRK. Uh, this doesn't really belong here. It doesn't belong anywhere in the presentation, but Lauren and I thought we should mention that you can do it anyway, just to be on the safe side. If you want to edit your MARC records, they have to be an MRK. You cannot change your file, change the data as an MRC file. So if once you get it in there, you remember, oh yeah, I wanted everything to have a certain field with information in it, you can add it in Mark Edit. And there's other videos on all the things you can do in Mark Edit. Um, but it has to be an MRK. MRC won't let you edit it. It'll just let you um, upload it into Koha so that you can edit it there. But sometimes it's easier to edit in Mark Edit than it is to edit in Koha. Not always, but usually. And um, let's say I uplo uploaded, uh, ready to upload W, and then I made a few changes in COA, but then I realized that I really need to do all of this a different way. That's, that's a good time to export the entire item type. There's probably an easier way. It's my way. Edge stage records, uploaded and ready to search. And this really is online. Uh, just go to cheerfulvalleypl.online. That's my test site where I um, you practice things that I don't really want to do on the production site. Uh, I did a search for the entire cartoon collection, 1204 results. This is much easier than uploading them one by one with Z3950. Also, when you up, do a Z3950 search, it'll replace your entire record. So I've heard, but I've also heard you can overlay stuff. Um, but here, here is one example, the Hokanson Festival. Helen Hokanson was a New Yorker cartoonist, uh, specialized in uh, society ladies of a certain age. Uh, and here's another one, uh, but you notice uh, this one actually has subject headings and genre, DDC classification, Library of Congress classification. So what, what if you want to add that? Well, um, that till next time, because this has covered a lot of stuff. And I figure most of you are half asleep anyway. I mean, this is the third day of the conference. Uh, but yes, you can. Uh, Mark Edit will do you know, batch searching. And you can convert uh, the LCCN to the current format search. And here are a few other things that uh, Lauren has compiled. Lauren, any concluding remarks? Have fun. <laughs> um, I will, in this presentation, we did this very quickly. It does not, you do not do this fast. I mean, this is a, um, depending on how many fields you have in your spreadsheet will determine on how long it will take you. Um, the, for me, one of the most time consuming tasks is determining which mark field I want to use for my column because some things can be put in more than one place. Um, and so that, and I don't think I did something for mark fields available um, to figure out which one would work better. Um, that could be a future thing, or you could email me um, if you're wanting to know where things are, but these are a list of things. Some of them I have used um, and some of them I have forgotten about. 
uh, until I did this presentation. I'm like, oh, I need to go there and look um, for editing things and Mark Edit. And there's some projects that I'm wanting to do, and I'm hoping that Mark Edit will allow me to do them um, easily. But I still have to research. But these are places that I have found um, look like they would be very helpful. Um, so please, there's more out there than what we have <laughs> or have shared today. Yes, and you, if you know a cataloger, run it by them. Um, yeah, I ran it by Heather and she's, <gasps> what are you doing? What the? Actually, she works for a maritime museum and you know, talks like a sailor at times. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't quite say it that way. Um, she's going to be uh, holding the cataloging SIG meeting later this afternoon. I hate to think of what she's going to say to me. <laughs> okay, any questions? So there's uh, somebody, Eugene Espinoza, uh, on the YouTube chat saying that they use auto-generate arguments in MarkEdit. They say they just put the corresponding fields in the first row, and then MarkEdit uses the data in the first row to auto-generate which fields those map to. So that's just a comment. Looks like there's a question right here in the room, though. Well more of an additional resource. Um, for those comfortable with the command line, uh, my name is Rogan, I work for Equinox, and I often run into this task in migrations. And in the Equinox migration repo on GitHub, you can find a Perl program called CSV to Mark that does the same sort of task with a few advantages, including being able to automate it if you have cause to do that, as well as do some things like control subfield groupings, say you have multiple fields, some of which you want in one 300, others you want in a different 300, as well as set static ones, such as say a Koha bib type or a notation in a nine XX field about creating the record. So just another resource. So someone else has already done my presentation. <laughs> However, uh, some people may have recoiled at command line or uh, auto-generate like I did. When Kelly talked about plugins the other day, she didn't mention there's also a CSV to mark plugin, um, I think developed by Tomas, so it's in the Theke repo, um, but there's also options for that. I really should have checked before we did this. Anyone else want to tell me that I... <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah Chris just said just one of many ways mm -hmm. 